I'm one of the LSU doctors. It's nice to meet y'all. Uh, thank y'all for inviting me to come speak. So this lecture is called New Year, New You, Exercise at Every Age. So at LSU, we have a tradition when residents give lectures to each other that we give personal pictures that mean a lot to us. Why is it doing that? Uh, these are my co-interns, Drs. De La Paz, Grandy, Ahmed, Rizzo Radkar, and Dufresne. We're missing two docs, but this was at our Christmas party. And um, the other thing we have to do before lectures is I have no financial disclosures to make. A little bit further on in the talk, I'm going to mention a few places. I don't get paid by these places to advertise for them. It's just um, free advertising for them. Um, so I'm a simple guy. I like to keep things kind of simple. This is an outline of my talk. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. So who. Uh, literally anyone can enjoy exercise at any age, at any activity level. We can find something for you to do. You know, there's no limitations, truly. Um, but we want you to ask your physician for their advice before you start any exercise program. Because we don't want you to hurt yourself. We want you to have fun, but we want you to be safe as well. So the first question you have to ask yourself before starting any exercise program is, what's your baseline? What are you able to do right now? And then we want you to meet that and exceed it. So figuring out your baseline activity level is great. So if you're wheelchair bound, there are exercises you can do in the wheelchair. Uh, chest expansions like this, dives, just be careful not to fall out of your chair. Uh, overhead punches, punches, arm circles, and sidearm raises. And these are for wheelchair bound folks, so we can still find something for you to do. This gentleman's lifting weights, he's probably lifting more than I could, and he's in a wheelchair. And in this class, this gentleman looks like he has a cerebral palsy type thing, but he's still exercising and enjoying himself and having fun. So. Um, incorporating your children or your grandkids, um, the most important thing you can do for them is set a good example and find activities you can enjoy together. I remember as a little kid, my dad and I would bike a lot. Um, and when I was little, my mom and dad and I would go camping. My job was to go collect the water and collect the little sticks to burn the tinder. And then um, the most important thing we can do, though, is to help our kids establish healthy habits early on in life. And then they'll, have important, they'll keep these habits later in life, which is great. So we've covered who, now we're on to what. Questions you probably have for your primary care providers. Doctor, what is the best exercise for me? There's a long answer, there's a short answer. The short answer is basically what you enjoy. Um, now, how can we exercise? You can do it by yourself or in classes. You can go online, and you can go either at home or to a gym. So the pros and cons of working by yourself you can write your own structure. You can figure out what you want to do, how often you do it, when you do it. You can compete against yourself, and you're not tied down to a class. If the class is at 3 o'clock and you get off work at 5... <laughs> All right. If you stay... Uh, if, if the class is at 3 o'clock and you, stay in, you get home at 5 o'clock, then that's not great for you. Some folks may be embarrassed at their activity levels. They think, oh, I don't want people to watch me exercise, and, and they can establish a routine. The cons cost and motivation. Some folks might find it hard to do things on their own. Pros and cons of a class. There's structure, you compete against other people. Some folks like the routine and the camaraderie of going to class together. Um, accountability. So if your buddy in Zumba class tells you, hey, where were you on Monday? You weren't here. Where, what happened to you? That can keep you kind of accountable and make you more likely to stay with it. You can have a routine. And there's someone there to teach you. The cons of working in a class is that sometimes they can be expensive, there are different levels, and sometimes timing can be inconvenient. You know, if, you, if your hours are long or if you don't feel like getting up early in the morning. So you can combine the two, actually. You can find in pretty much anything you want online on YouTube. Um, there's a really good yoga station, Yoga with Adrian. You can do some Krav Maga training. That's uh, an Israeli uh, self-defense uh, martial art dance classes. There's someone to teach you, but you can combine. Um, you have the convenience of exercising whenever you want online. And usually those are free uh, on YouTube. So basal metabolic rate. So I don't want to get into the weeds here in the science, but basically your thyroid gland sets your basal metabolic rate, and that determines how much energy you're going to burn. We burn energy all the time, whether we're sitting down doing nothing or if we're running and jogging and cycling. So you're always burning energy. These METs are metabolic equivalents, and that's how much energy you're burning at any given time. So you see here, even when you're asleep, you're burning 0.9 METs. You're riding at your desk, you have 1.8 METs. If you're bicycling, light effort, you're 5.5 METs. 
And if you're jumping rope, that's 10 mets. So this is why, if you've seen Rocky with Sylvester Stallone, some of the most fit people around are boxers because of the way they train with the jump ropes. Um, here we go into moderate and vigorous activity. These are all things that we can do, even if we're not in rocky shape. You can garden, you can do housework, um, play games with your kiddos or grandkids, you can build things. Swimming is fantastic exercise, aerobics, cycling. These are all different examples of things you can do to kind of give you ideas and inspiration. Now, how much energy you burn is a function of how much you weigh. So it takes more energy to move folks that are 280 pounds than it does to move folks that are 100 pounds. So let's look at, for example, housework. If you're 100 pounds and you're doing some housework for 30 minutes, you burn about 90 calories. If you're working 30 minutes and you're 280 pounds, doing housework, you're burning almost 300 calories. And that's just housework. So there's always stuff to do. This is more examples of housework, vacuuming, washing dishes. You're always going to burn some calories doing activity. The goal is to move more. So these are just photos of people exercising, walking. I googled walking trails in Lake Charles, and these are all the places that came up. Um, Sam Houston State Park is supposedly very pretty. They have lots of good nature trails if you like to be outside. A thing that I tell some of my patients that are maybe a little bit older, um, and if they're afraid of falling, is to go to Walmart or to Target or to the mall and walk there. Um, because there's people around, and it's air-conditioned, and it's safe to walk there. Because some people might not live in safe neighborhoods. Um, I, there's a story in Shreveport, one of our attendings said that she recommended to her patient to walk, and she said, well, doctor, if I walked in my neighborhood, I'd get shot. She said she never even thought about that, that she, some people might live in dangerous neighborhoods. So Walmart, Target, the mall are good places to go. Running, running trails, there's 1,980 routes that you can run in Lake Charles. Same thing, I just Googled a Google map and pulled running trails here. Biking, rowing, this is one of my personal favorites is rowing. Because it's very repetitive and you can kind of let your mind go blank and just focus on the activity. Swimming and water aerobics are fantastic exercises because you don't have the resistance of gravity and it's low impact. So you can burn a lot of calories by doing a much less effort in the water. Yoga is fantastic. It's a martial art against yourself where you compete against yourself. Um, and it's getting to be more mainstream now. These are just yoga poses. You don't have to do the crazy pretzel things. You can just do uh, light stretching. More yoga poses here. Tai Chi. Now this is, in medicine, we like to do randomized control trials, which are basically just studies. And there's some studies that take older adults that do Tai Chi. And the ones that practice Tai Chi consistently fell less. You fall less, you break less hips. Break less hips, you spend less time in the hospital. Less time in the hospital means more time with your loved ones hanging out and having fun. So Tai Chi is a really good martial art for balance. More martial arts. These are some martial arts classes here in Lake Charles. So there's a yoga studio. There's a, several, like Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu. Zumba is very popular um, on college campuses. They use music similar to what we listened to with uh, our 81-year-old friend at the beginning. Um, and they not, don't just use Latin music. They use lots of different types of music. It's fun, and it's a class, and you get to see people have fun and enjoy themselves. Uh, Orange Theory and CrossFit. So I personally have not done these, but a couple of my friends do, and they love it. Uh, Orange Theory. The theory is that you want to keep your heart rate high in the orange level, and then you, you do muscle confusion, which means you do a bunch of different things. And then CrossFit is cross-training, so they do weights and running and jumping, and it might be a little bit intense for me, but more power to you if you can do it. So all the stuff we're talking about with exercise is meaningless unless we talk about diet. So a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. 3,500 divided by 7 is 500. So our goal is to cut 500 calories per day to lose a pound per week. That's an important number to remember, 500 calories per day. So if you're a Coca-Cola drinker or a Dr. Pepper drinker, that's three and a half Cokes. So you have one at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You cut that out, you're dropping your 500 calories a day. How about your diet? How much do you say? So with, with Diet Cokes, typically they don't have any calories, but they do have artificial sweeteners, which aren't great for other reasons. But um, decreasing your portion sizes, using smaller plates, eating all your meals, don't skip breakfast. Um, stay away from juices, and alcohol has tons of calories. And this is like for cheat days. Some folks will eat great for a week and then eat a whole pizza buffet on one day, and it kind of undoes the work you're doing for that week. So 500 calories per day less than you're eating now, you'll drop a pound a week. So when? This is the biggest obstacle for people for exercise, because they don't know when they can do it. One of our attendings said, just wake up earlier. Um, so figure out what time of day works best for you. First thing in the morning, kind of jumpstart your day with an exercise. 
at your lunch break, on the way home from work. The trick from this is to keep your bag and your workout clothes in your car. Because I know if I go home, I'm get on the couch and relax, I ain't leaving. If I get my pajamas on, it's done for the day. So the key here is to make exercise part of your daily routine. Make it a habit. So at work, you can exercise. Some of our attendings take the stairs um, off all nine flights of, of the stairs at the hospital, and that's a way to burn calories. If you're working at a desk, you want to take some stretch breaks, park a little bit farther away, and work, uh, walk a little bit to get to work. Um, some of the apps and devices like Apple Watches and Fitbits have like time to stand, so they signal you, hey, take a break and stand. Now, a number that we've probably heard in the news is 10,000 steps. That's the goal that you want to get through your work. And I was curious as to where that started. Um, it started in the 1964 Olympics as an ad campaign in Japan. Manpo Kei, I think I probably butchered that Japanese. But um, the goal is actually 7,000 to 8,000 steps per day. So it's very like uh, the Just Do It campaign from the 90s with Nike. This was the 10,000 steps as a campaign that they started in Japan to get fit. And uh, it's an easy number to remember. So where? These are all the exercise places available in Lake Charles if you want to go to a facility. And some um, retirement communities, nursing homes, and apartment complexes have gyms in there uh, on the site. Some people like to exercise at home. Uh, home exercise equipment is becoming more affordable. OK, so why do we exercise? Again, there's a long answer and a short answer. So all the food that we eat is broken down to this, which is ATP, which has a fancy scientific name, which we're not going to worry about. But this is energy for our bodies. These are muscle fibers. Tendons tie muscle to bone. And the whole goal with exercise is to get our muscles fit. Not all muscle fibers are created equal. Some are good for long distance running. Some are good for sprinting. And this is just more about this. There are different types of muscles. And the goal is to exercise all of them. The heart is a muscle, too. I forgot to put that in there. But the heart is just a big muscle. So we want to exercise the heart, too. So you want to do weight training, and you want to do cardiovascular training to get your muscles and your um, heart fit. So the recommendation is 150 minutes per week. But if I tell you to do that, and you're doing zero minutes per week, it's too hard to jump from zero to 150. So start at 10 minutes a day, twice a week. Something small like that, and then gradually increase your activity levels. So this is the long answer for why we should exercise. There's tons of things that are good for us. I'm not going to read to you all these things. But in your mind, think exercise helps pretty much everything. Reduces body fat, increases your lifespan, lowers your blood pressure. Um, some of the medicines we give you can drop your blood pressure by 5 to 10 millimeters mercury. Exercising and losing 10% of your body mass can drop your blood pressure by 20 points, 20 millimeters mercury. So we can, if we can get you walking and get your diet under control, we can get you off some of those pills that we all hate to take. So my generation is getting real bad about technology. Um, and we're taking here sedentary people, which people don't move much, and people that exercise regularly. Um, the heart rate is lower in people that exercise, and that's good. We want the heart rate to be low. So you can compare and contrast the differences here between people that exercise and those that do not. And just looking at the picture, posture is nice and straight. He looks happy. This fellow's slump-shouldered slump and looking down at his phone. So not great. These are some more pictures. So some folks like to learn with lists. Some folks like to learn with pictures. So we're helping our heart, which is just a big old muscle. We're helping our muscles. We're helping our lungs, bone density. Once we hit um, menopause, for our ladies in the audience, our bones get brittle because we lose estrogen. So we want to make sure that we're making our bones nice and strong with vitamin D and calcium and regular exercise. Specifically, being outdoors makes you feel better. You get sunlight, which is vitamin D, which helps with your bone density. And it makes you feel better. You increase dopamine and serotonin and endorphins, which are the feel-good uh, neurotransmitters of the brain. And the brain is what really benefits a lot with exercise. It helps your memory, your attention. Um, helps you multitask and plan. It's all around some of the best medicine that we can give for you is exercising. One of my friends likes to say that a six-pack starts in the kitchen. So this is just to reiterate, this is not me. But uh, this is just to reiterate that all of your exercise is meaningless unless you watch your diet as well. Helps you with better sleep. Before I was looking through the presentation, I just had this picture of this poor fellow sleeping, and I didn't caption it, so it looked kind of strange. <laughs> so better sleep. Uh, here, this is just people that exercise vigorously, moderately light, and no activity. The people that exercise report getting better sleep. Two-thirds of them get good sleep, which is pretty solid. So now we're at the how. 
So we've talked about exercise. Anyone can exercise. Exercise is important. It makes us feel better. Tons of physiologic benefits. How do we make exercise a habit? There's an old saying, that how do you eat an elephant? I'm sure you all know it. One bite at a time. So you've got to start somewhere. Specifically, the way we change our behavior is by making SMART goals. So SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. If I say that I want to go compete in the Olympics as a boxer tomorrow, it's probably not going to happen for me. Um, I guess I could, but not likely. So this is an example of a SMART goal. I'm going to walk 20 minutes on my treadmill at home today when I leave the hospital, whichever time that is. So why is it a SMART goal? It's specific. I'm going to walk on my treadmill at home. What I'm going to do, where I'm going to do it, and where I'm going to do it. It's measurable. I'm going to walk for 20 minutes. Achievable. Right now, I'm able to walk 20 minutes. Relevant. Walking today helps me run tomorrow. So it's time bound. It gives me a specific time. I'm going to do it tonight when I get home from the hospital. And the act of writing down goals, our brains are so powerful that the act of writing them down helps us to achieve our goals. There was a study done in Harvard in the 1980s that, that asserts that. So this is a really neat book. Again, I'm not getting paid to advertise for this book. But um, it talks about habits and how we make better habits. Um, it's really good. if you have, It's a short read, maybe a couple hundred pages. But it goes into a little bit more about how to change our behavior. And again, it all goes back to the brain. We want to make exercise a habit so that it sticks. And then forming new habits. I'm not going to go into this too much. But basically, we all have routines. Um, you figure out what your routine is. You figure out rewards. Now, if your reward is a Big Mac with a milkshake and a large fry, that probably ain't the best reward. But apples are pretty sweet, and they're 30 calories. So, and a good glass of milk has good vitamin D and calcium. Still has 140 calories, but it's not as bad for you as a Coke. So the 15-second version, there's a preacher back home that likes to joke. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it, and I'm going to tell you what I said. So this is the stuff that we talked about today. Exercise is important. Everybody can exercise, no matter what their baseline activity level is. It does not matter what you do, but you've got to have fun doing it. And if you enjoy it and have fun, you're more likely to stick with it. Make exercise a habit. And we make habits by making SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time sensitive. And something I want to leave you with is progress, not perfection. If you exercise one day a week, that's great. If you're exercising zero days a week, so now you're doing one, that's, that's progress. It's not 150 minutes recommended by the American uh, Medical Association yet, but we'll get you there. Start with one day a week, 10 minutes. And it's not how far you walk or how fast you walk, it's how long. We want you to get that heart rate up for about 10 minutes at a time, OK? And uh, so I'm going to close with some pictures. Like I said, at LSU, we have a tradition of showing pictures. So this is a lot of the folks in our residency uh, for the Christmas party. And that plugs us here. Uh, the Lake Charles Memorial Residency Program, we are taking new patients. You get two doctors for the price of one, so you get a resident physician and an attending physician. And y'all can make appointments with us here. So I want to leave you with progress, not perfection. Thank you all for your time and attention. I'm happy to answer any questions if I can. <laughs> Mm-hmm.